In this video, we'll take another look at my Mario Maker fan game, Gold Super Smashy Maker, a game where I've been adding a ton of fan-suggested features like new bosses, enemies, platforms, and more. For this video, I focused a bit more on Mario's movements and did some quality of life improvements to make the gameplay smoother. Let's take a look, and also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. One thing I really liked from previous games are these chain links which originated in Super Mario World. Just like Vines, Mario can climb these fences but he can also perform some more actions too. He can punch it, which can defeat climbing enemies on the other side, and if he punches one of these spinning gates, he can climb on the other side too. So first, I added normal vine climbing just to get the climbing code fully operational, and that didn't take too long. As you can tell, I didn't add the SMB1 climb physics you would expect, but that's for prototype purposes. When the vines were done, I started adding in the chain links which look like these. As you can see, the tiling for them already works perfectly. Of course, chain link climbing is quite different from vine climbing and just using these side facing sprites would not really work if Mario turns to the other side of a fence. So that's why I decided to add both forwards and backwards facing sprites too. These will be an extra indicator to check if you are in front or behind a fence. You might also notice that it is now possible to climb diagonally which is impossible in Super Mario Maker 2. This will make gameplay a bit less static in my opinion. If Mario is behind the fence, not only his sprite should change, but he should also appear behind it. As this is a 2D game, we can do this by changing the sprite order which is quite easy to do. At this point I used the hotkey to change from 4 to background and now Mario is actually behind the fence. Even if he stops climbing, he will stay behind it, as the game stores that data. However, this won't affect any gameplay when not climbing. To change from 4 to background and vice versa, we obviously need one of these spinning fences and the ability to punch the fence. I started with adding the punch. After one punch, there's a small delay for moving and punching again. This punch animation of course got added for both the four and background climbing. After that, I added in the animation for the spinning gate which can rotate either left or right depending on Mario's position relative to the center of the gate which gets calculated after we hit it. Then I made Mario move over to the correct position after a punch which is also calculated depending on the distance to the center of the gate once again. The further you are away from it, the more distance Mario travels. The only thing left to do was actually turning Mario around which also needs some animations. And as you can tell, it looks quite cool. I also made sure Mario needs to be fully on the spinning gates for it to work, to avoid any bugs and glitches. As the creator of a stage, you will be able to place down spinning gates in between fences and turn from one side to the other, as you can see here. When Mario is climbing, he can of course still collect coins, but if the coins are in the foreground and Mario is in the background, he should not be able to collect them, which is still the case here. And it also counts for the other way around. That's why I added some simple code which checks the foreground background state of the coins and Mario. This will make sure that he can only collect coins in the same state as him. This is also the case for the big coins and star coins. In some cases you can even almost fully hide behind a star coin, like this. In future videos I'll be adding climbing enemies like these Koopas, moving fences and maybe even ones that are around like these. Let me know what else you would want to see. In one of my previous videos, I already showed off the Mini Mario power-up, but I thought it was time to improve him, and I think I succeeded. To begin, I added actual Mini Mario sprites instead of just shrinking the small Mario sprites, which look like these. Because they're so small, it was difficult to put detail into them, but the spriter did so really well. As you can tell from this gameplay, his jump physics aren't what they should be. Mini Mario is of course known for his more floatier physics, so I took a look at NSMBU and tried to fully copy those Mini Mario physics. It took me a while to get them as perfect as I could, but eventually I was satisfied with these jumps. He can jump a bit higher and falls down slower, of course. Now obviously, Mini Mario is also known for some of his other awesome abilities like running on walls and sprinting over water. As I haven't added water to the game just yet, I decided to start implementing the wall running ability. If Mario runs into a wall while sprinting and going faster than his walking speed, he starts running onto that wall, straight up. So first, I simply added that moving behavior to my code which looks a bit funny here, as he does not turn a sprite yet. I also derived this wall running speed from NSMBU, which is 8 tiles per second. First I made sure that if the player stops inputting a directional button or stops sprinting, Mario loses his speed and falls back down. I also did that for when he hits the ceiling. Then I made a sprite turn depending on the angle he's running on and from which side he runs up the wall. But of course he needs to stop running if no wall is detected anymore. And we can't have this happening either, where he moonwalks up a wall. So I made sure Mario can only run on a wall when he is facing that wall. So when Mario detects a corner, he should automatically turn back to normal running. So I added some code which detects corners like these. When he turns, he keeps his forward momentum as well of course. Looks pretty cool. This should also happen when Mario runs off an edge. This should make him start wall run downwards, so not like this. 
For that, I added some edge detection. And at first, I didn't do it correctly as you can tell, and Mario just started running up into the sky without any walls in sight. Luckily, this was just a dumb oversight and it was fixed quickly. Then the next problem occurred where I made Mario run upwards when an edge got detected, which is of course not the intention. After fixing the code, I made it work and it looked like this. I was quite happy with how it turned out here. Oh, and I also had this funny bug happen to me during the coding process where Mario kept turning a sprite. So with that said, enjoy small mini Mario parkour which perfectly shows off how the wall running works. Later on, I'll be adding water and the ability to run over it, but for now this will have to do. Let me know what you think of it. One small thing I like from NSMVDS and NSMV2 are these tight ropes. Mario can stand on them, which makes him a bit slower, and if he stands still for too long, he falls through the rope. I started working on them as well, and used these cool sprites. First, I made Mario able to stand on it, but I had some weird bugs happening. Mario started jittering, and he would keep floating in the air if he tried getting off. Luckily, that was fixed fast. Then I added some new sprites for balancing Mario. As you can tell, they are really well made. And if he stands still, he will start doing this unbalanced animation. He should then also fall through the rope, as he lost his balance. That happens after around 3 seconds, just like an NSMB2. After that, I made sure that Mario very quickly loses forward momentum when jumping on one of these tight ropes. Of course, Mario can jump off the tight ropes, and depending on which part of the rope he is standing on, his jump height will change. The tight rope also bends depending on Mario's position. Now, because this is SMB1, it's more difficult to implement those bending mechanics, so I did not try it yet. But here's a small representation of how it will most likely look if it is done. This will also make it look way less static. So for now, that's it for the tight ropes, but they will definitely return. What do you think of these so far? As I mentioned earlier, I also added some quality of life improvements to make the gameplay smoother. One of those is unduck detection. This will make sure that if Mario is ducking while hitting a ceiling and then releases a duck button, he will not immediately unduck as he would be inside of the ceiling, like you can see here. So this unduck detection checks if we are far enough from the ceiling to actually unduck. Apart from that, I added crushing detection as well, so Mario can get crushed both vertically and horizontally. This was quite important to add for a game like this. I also improved Mario's physics a little bit to make it more like those from Super Mario Maker 2. Here's a small preview. And lastly, I quickly improved the animations for picking up big coins, which now mimic those from Super Mario Maker 2 perfectly. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you liked all the improvements made, and if you have any other suggestions, you can always drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching.